The next move is called single whip. It's repeated five times in William C. C. Chen's 60 movements. First I'll demonstrate it for you and then I'll break it down. So to break it down, we start in the push position, and just to do it without the hands, you can see what I'm doing first is setting the ball of the left foot, setting the left knee, and then releasing the left quad and spiraling down to the right. Notice that what I'm not doing is just rocking back. I'm not going like this. What I'm doing is spiraling down. And so that maintains my root and my energetic coherence as I, as I do that. So it's left ball, knee, release the claw, and I'm moving away from my hands. So see that? The hands, I'm not pushing them out, I'm just moving away from them. And rotating the palms slightly so that their palms are now down. My, I'm caught into my left claw. So that now, when I get to the second step, I'm going to energize the left ball, set the left knee, and energize and turn. And as I do that, I reach out with my fingers and pivot on the right heel. So that my right foot is now facing straight ahead. All my weight is in my left leg. So I'm feeling this energetic connection down through my left leg. Then I feel the ball of my right foot set my right knee and spiral down to the right. And as I do that, I draw my right hand in and my left hand cups under my navel. Notice that my elbow stays down. So I just drop my elbow as I spiral down to the right. My hand forms a bird's beak. So here, as I come in, I bring my fingers together and bend the wrist as I drop my elbow, and I want to line this up on my center line. And here's a close-up of the bird's beak. As I draw in my right hand, fingers come together, and I bend from the wrist. Notice that my elbow stays down. Notice that my left hand is cupped under my navel. From here, I feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, and energize the right quad. As I do that, I turn to the left, reach out with the right hand. Notice that I'm leading with the wrist. Notice that my elbow is dropped. My left hand stays cupped under my navel. My weight stays in the right foot 100%. As I turn, I'm going to pivot on that the ball of the left foot. So all my weight stays in that right leg. Now I feel the ball of the right foot. I set the right knee and spiral down a little bit to the right. And from there I just step across, put the foot down, heel first, and then make that empty step across my body. The reason we do this is if I just try to turn from here, my leg's not long enough to be able to set that, and that's going to throw my balance off if I try to just kind of settle into that. So what I want to do is spiral down to the right. That makes me a little bit lower. I step across. I'm, I'm rooted as I step across. From here, I feel the ball of the left foot. Push my left knee out and set the left knee, and the left hand comes up. Elbow stays down. So notice I'm rotating from the, uh, from the elbow, using the elbow as a pivot point. The right hand stays out over the uh, right foot. My weight is now 70% in the left leg. 
So here's what that left hand looks like. As it comes up, notice that my elbow stays down and I just bring my hand up. So now I'm going to feel the ball of my left foot, set the left knee, and energize the left quad. As I do that, my whole body turns, I pivot on the right heel, my left hand turns, I rotate the left forearm so my left palm is facing forward, my right hand comes out to the side. Notice that my right elbow is slightly in front of my body. What I don't want to do, and a common mistake, is to have the elbow back behind my body and that kind of puts a strain on my uh, chest, shoulders, and kinks the hose there. I want to keep that elbow down. My wrist is lower than my shoulder. My elbow is lower than my wrist. My weight is 70 percent in the left leg. Here's a close-up of that final rotation of the forearm. As the whole body turns, the left forearm rotates. Now do it facing you. 